Hi, I'm Carol. Let's talk about pets. So today we're going to talk about puppy and kitten care. Since there's so much information to share with you, we're going to split this into two videos. Um, since I'm the crazy cat lady, I'll be talking about kittens. Mary, who's crazy about dogs, will be chatting with us about puppies in another video. So first off, congratulations on adopting your newest family member. Um, there's a lot of excitement right now with your new kitten, but there's lots of information uh, that you also need to learn as well. So first off, kittens need vaccinations. Um, no matter where you get your pet, they're probably going to need more vaccinations than what they've been given. Um, so speak to your vet to see which vaccines are the most appropriate and how many uh, more will be needed as well as any kind of testing. Um, while most vaccinations are uh, generally well uh, tolerated, occasionally they can cause reactions. Um, these can include extreme lethargy, vomiting, diarrhea, facial swelling, and hives. And these usually occur within the first four hours of the vaccine. This is an urgent medical uh, need, so your pet will need to be seen by the vet um, immediately. So call the clinic and head back in. Um, your kitten may be a little sleepy after vaccinations, which is normal. Um, it's not considered extreme unless they're not willing to rise to get food or drink or to play. Um, socialization and desensitization are some of the most important things you can do in training your new pet. Um, cats are obviously different than dogs. Um, they, uh, after about four months though, uh, kittens do get more set in their ways. Um, kittens are actually very trainable though. Um, you know, look for um, future videos we'll be doing online uh, concerning that. Um, Jackson Galaxy has some great ones on uh, training your cats to do certain things. Um, there's also some other uh, great videos out there too of, of other types and tricks uh, you can teach your pets. Um, uh, one of the things you do need to try to do with your kittens is uh, touch their paws, touch their ears, touch their stomachs, look in their mouths. Um, when they're young, uh, they're you know, much more easy to handle. And um, if you do this often and uh, pair it with a, a highly desirable treat, it makes future treatments like nail trims and dental checks uh, much, more, um, much easier for everybody. Um, it's often good if you can afford to do so, um, and it is feasible to do so, is get more than one kitten. Um, you know, they are totally adorable in sets um, and also helps teach them um, bite inhibition. Um, you know, what's cute bite behavior when they're two is not really cute when they're 12, um, 12 pounds. Um, they also keep each other entertained and again, super cute, um, you know, to, to watch them playing. Um, feeding is another important aspect um, in your pet's life. Cats do have very specific feeding needs, so making sure you're feeding your pet a uh, food formulated for um, kittens specifically is very important. Um, when you're looking for foods, look for the AFCO label. It's spelled A-A-F-C-O. Um, they are a nonprofit organization um, in the United States that sets standards for both animal feeds and pet foods. Um, with regards to how much to feed, um, look on the side of the bag. Uh, generally speaking, um, you know, they'll have, they'll have the range. Um, usually you'll want to go um, on the lower end of that range. Um, we are having a little bit of technical difficulties. My pet Boris has decided uh, that he is going to uh, join in on the video. Um, so wet food is generally best for our cats. Um, it's higher in protein, lower in carbohydrates, and has more moisture. Um, and since cats are obligate carnivores, um, they do not process carbohydrates the same way uh, humans do or even dogs. So giving them a, a, a food that has higher protein is, is best. Dry food is fine. Again, just keeping to uh, making sure it's AFCO approved and also uh, making sure it's high in protein is, is also very beneficial. Another thing to keep in mind um, when you're looking for a food is that kittens should be exposed to different types of food and different shapes of food. Um, the reason being is that uh, they've done studies to show that cats um, um, that are exposed to different kinds of food, different kinds of kibble, as um, when they're kittens, um, helps them to recognize other tape, sh shapes and sizes as they get older. Um, you know, this is especially important if we say have to change them to a prescription diet later on in their life. Uh, meal feeding is going to be the best for your pets. Um, free feeding can lead to obesity and um, you know sadly there aren't a whole lot of cats out there that can self-regulate um, and obesity is one of the the most common problems that we see with our cats. Um, next uh, we should discuss litter boxes. So 
Um, often we're asked as veterinary technicians, um, you know, what kind of litter do we think is the best? Um, the answer is actually the, the, the kind that they'll use. Um, unless your cat has asthma, any kind will work. As far as the number of boxes goes, uh, general rule of thumb is about one box per cat plus one. Um, you can also switch up the types of litter you have in each one or use the same one in each one. Um, so just, you know, again, you're going to have to trial and error is the best way to kind of figure all of this out. Um, cats do have an excellent sense of smell, so making sure we keep our, our, their toilet clean is, is imperative. Now, in my situation, um, I do have a very unique situation. I do have five cats. I have one box, um, but I have a sifting box. I sift it twice a day, and I use world's best cat litter. Um, this seems to work best in our household, and knock on wood, we don't have any issues with this now that I've discussed it, but um, nobody goes outside the box. But that's what works best for me. It might not work best for you and your kitty cats. Um, we'll also, in a further episode, we'll actually discuss litter box avoidance and urinary issues. Um, playtime. Uh, playtime is also a very critical aspect of a kitten and cat life. Um, these are very intelligent creatures and they need stimulation. And so we just need to make sure that they have a variety of toys, cat trees, scratching posts, um, you know, uh, playtime with you know with playtime with you or with their with their um, their other cats and dogs in the house is very important. Um, toys don't have to be complex. I mean, uh, so my cats play with you know paper balls and and a cardboard box from Amazon is one of their one of their favorite toys that that they get. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you get any kind of new toy, no matter where you get it or what you know what you use, um, watch out for um, them eating eating the parts and pieces on it, uh, pieces of string, um, you know, um, sharp parts, things like that that they could swallow, um, could cause you know um, injury or you know even a foreign body um, situation. So um, just keeping in mind, watching to see how they they play with those items is very important, and taking them away if they seem like they're having a problem. One of the best toys you can get, though, is a laser pointer. So um, if you've never played with a cat with a laser pointer, you're in for a treat. It's absolutely hysterical to watch them go after this little red dot that they're never going to catch, but, um, you know, they, it's excellent exercise for them, um, and they most cats out there love it. Um, the next aspect to talk about is scratching posts. Um, Scratching posts are incredibly important for our cats. Um, every cat needs to have at least one uh, place in the house that they can scratch their claws. Um, furniture obviously is not where we want them scratching their claws. Um, but the best uh, cat trees are going to be the ones where they can stretch out um, their their full length of their body and, um, and stretch. Um, this is extremely important for them because it helps stretch out those muscles in their backs and their legs and also helps remove the outer sheaths of their of their claws. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is introducing your pet to your kitten to other pets. So this is definitely a challenge for most people. Um, we want to make sure that you know your new fur ball gets along well with all the members of the family. Um, so I usually tell clients that whenever you add or subtract uh, any pets in the household, it's going to change that dynamic, and most people already understand that. Uh, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. Um, you know, I have had really good luck with adding guys to my household, but right now we're at a perfect balance, and I'm not adding any more. Um, but I'll tell you, Jackson Galaxy actually does a much better job of discussing techniques um, for introducing uh, cats into the household than I can. So um, check out his videos online or even his books, and I'll put a link um, below uh, to talk, you know, to send you to his page to um, see what he has to say on that. So. Uh, that's all I have for today. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thank you and have a great day.